Hey guys, so in a previous video, I uh, mentioned how difficult it was to replace the monoballs in the Milway camber plates, and well today, I kind of want to show you how to do that. Uh, I will say though, if you don't have a bench vise, you probably aren't going to be able to do this yourself. Okay, so before you actually start, you know, removing the monoball itself, we want to take out this little metal uh, sleeve or spacer if you have it. And uh, looking at this uh, monoball assembly, you can see, right, you have the monoball itself, you have that extra spacer sleeve in there, and on this side, you can see that we don't have it. And this is to uh, shim the inner diameter of the monoball to um, the M12 uh, uh, shock shaft uh, thread that comes on, you know, F2X, F3X. If you're using like an M14 thread, um, from a, you know a uh, an F8X car. Well, you probably didn't have this uh, this little sleeve inserted. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to put your camera plate down. You want to take the monowall and you want to spin it such that you know this sleeve is facing down. So if it would be uh, in this camera plate I have here, it'd be like that. And then you just take you know a flat punch and uh, t you know put it against the uh, inside lip of that, and then just tap it out all around. Um, these things, uh, you know, the sleeves themselves have a bit of a serration on it so they, they can grab uh, the sidewalls, but you know, they, they tap out without too much effort. Once you have that sleeve removed, the next thing we need to do is we need to remove this locking ring under here um, that secures the uh, monoball or prevents the monoball assembly from uh, being pressed out. And I have one of these locking rings here. You can see that it's got four indentations for like a spline tool to go in and rotate against. But unfortunately, like this isn't a standard spline tool that you, go, you can find at like any hardware store, even like McMaster. Um, Millway has their own, you know, special one, but they really haven't sent any out of Sweden. So unfortunately, that means we have to resort to a big hammer and a punch. And if you think you can just hold this and you know tap tap this ring around uh, to unscrew it, well, unfortunately, you're wrong. You really need a bench vise to hold this thing. Of course, you know then the question becomes, well, you know if you have a bench vise and you're grabbing on this circular part, um, or I guess you know up top, you know how would you do that? And well, you know make sure that this uh, this clamp, this you know metal C clamp along with the bolts and uh, you know your, your uh, strut brace mount are in there because then you can use the jaws of the vise to clamp against it such uh, that you know this piece cannot rotate as you're trying to hammer and spin this little ring. So here you guys can see you know the underside of this plate that I've got mounted in the uh, vise and you know I've got the big mount uh, for the strut brace up against the jaw here and then uh, the other jaws up against the screw as well as this main uh, center housing that is around the monoball. So the plate, if I you know, were to try and rotate it, it can't rotate in, these, uh, uh, in this uh, position. Okay, at this point, I would recommend taking some uh, penetrating oil, you know, like liquid wrench, and just you know, lubricating around the edge of this uh, ring here, just so that you know, hopefully we can get it to spin a little bit more easily. And then you can go ahead and take your punch, position it against you know, one of those indentations and your uh, you know, dead blow mallet, and you can start hammering this. Uh, to try and get to spin and you know don't just focus on one indentation do a couple you know solid wax over here and then you know position the uh, punch on one of the other indentations you know, you know you really only need to do you know the 180 degrees part you have to do every single one and then give it some good solid wax and really you know don't be afraid you really got to give these things some wax before uh, this thing will start to budge but once it does come loose, then it's pretty easy to just take your punch in one of the indentations and then just spin the ring around till it comes, uh, you know, all the way off. So the next step then is, okay, now we have to press the actual monoball out of, uh, you know, its main aluminum housing piece. And well, to do that, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to undo the three um, six millimeter hex bolts up top so that you can eventually take that piece out of the plate itself. With the main monowall housing piece out, you're going to once again get that some of that penetrating oil and uh, you know just get a little bit of it around the periphery of here, let it soak in there so that it can get between the aluminum piece and the monoball itself. You can also go to the underside and uh, you'll do the same around here. Um, you know, I'm just using this completed assembly for example, but you know, by this point you'll have removed this, uh, this locking ring. And you'll be able to see you know, the, the seam between the monoball itself and the uh, aluminum housing. 
Once you've got your penetrating oil in there, go ahead and take the top nut that Millway supplies and uh, go ahead and insert that from this side. And we're actually going to use this as, you know, see, you know kind of this uh, uh, area to press on in order to press it out. Because, well, you know, obviously like this, it's flush with the housing. So how are you going to press on the, just the monoball by using the top nut? So now you can see I've got this piece mounted once again in the jaws of the vise and you're just going to turn your vise such that this jaw pushes on the nut and that presses the monoball out. Um, you know, it required a good amount of force to get the ones out that I have gotten out. Uh, so don't be afraid to like really, you know, wrench on it, back it off and then wrench on it again. Maybe add a little bit more penetrating oil in that interface um, as, as you do that. Now eventually what will happen is, is you'll press this so far that the uh, top nut here will become flush with the top of the housing so you won't be able to use the vise anymore. But at that point the mod ball is almost all the way out and so if you just once again take your uh, dead blow mallet and you just give it a nice whack, well the mono ball will come you know, uh, flying out the bottom. So here is the old mono ball that we just pressed out and here is the new one I am going to be replacing it with. And uh, one thing you can notice is it's got this little uh, line or this little ridge on the uh, housing side here. And well, if we look at the old mono ball, this is the top side because it's you know, a lot dirtier uh, than the bottom which is shielded by that um, indented uh, locking ring. Uh, and so what that tells me is that this ridge faces the bottom of the camber plate. So just, you know, be mindful of that orientation when you're pressing these things together. How much it really matters, I'm not entirely sure, but both of the monoballs I pressed out were in this orientation, so I think I'm going to follow that. So here is the, you know, monoball uh, housing, and I'm, once again, I'm gonna take some penetrating oil. I'm just gonna put a little bit along the side walls here, um, just so that you know, I can press this new monoball in uh, pretty easily and then, you know, go ahead and spread it around a bit and make sure it's, uh, it's nicely lubricated. And then I'm also going to rub some of that oil on the uh, outside of the monoball housing as well. Next, I'm going to take that monoball and I'm going to put it in and uh, make sure it's a little bit straight. And I'm just going to, you know, press it in a little bit by hand just to get it started and make sure that it's sitting straight in there. So I've done that, you know, you can see I'm pressing up on it a little bit here. So I know it's started to enter that, uh, that uh, uh, area where it's supposed to be press fit into. And then what we need to do is we need to get a pressing tool. So if you recall, when we pressed it out, you know, we used the top nut, uh, but we don't really want to use this top nut when pressing it in. Well, aside from the fact that, well, it's too short here and your vise is just going to hit this edge of the housing before it starts pressing on here. And even if you like put an extension or something on here like a socket, well, we don't want to do this. And why? Because this top nut would be pressing against the monoball edge itself instead of the, you know, larger housing um, edge. And well, you know, that's what makes these monoballs kind of fail anyways, right? By putting too much load on the monoball and not on the outer housing instead. So we want to find something else such as a 21 millimeter socket that can uh, fit perfectly around the monoball housing while not pushing any pressure on the actual ball itself. So I find that this works great. And then what we'll do is I'll put this in the vise and then we will use that to press it in. All right, so now we have the uh, you know, 21 millimeter socket on the monoball and the housing is in the vise. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start tightening the vise to press the monoball into place. and you'll feel it get really stiff once it uh, goes all the way. All right, now you can see our monoball is pressed all the way. You know, it's uh, as far as it can go. It's, you know, pretty, it's up against that limiter wall on this side and over here it's pretty flush. So now we can go ahead and take that uh, indented locking ring and we'll use that to secure it. Um, you know, you, one thing you might consider doing is you might using just a small tiny bit of blue Loctite on this or Loctite uh, 242 as it's actually called, right? So this stuff right here. Um, because that way you don't have to like worry about really pounding this uh, super tight and it should still hold. That said, you know, you will still need to hammer this tight enough. So anyways, let's go ahead and uh, 
put this uh, locking ring in there. And then you can go ahead and just grab your punch and start spinning it until it uh, closes all the way down. Now, you know, I've spun the ring all the way down, but we haven't, you know, set it as tight as we can go because to do that, you really do need to install this back inside the main, you know, larger camber plate body. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And you know, I'm going to take this guy, put it in here, then I'll grab the uh, clamp for it. And, uh, you know, with these six millimeter hex bolts, just, you know, get them screwed in. I, I still want this to be able to slide, so I, I don't want it to be too tight, but, you know, I, I do want this thing to be on the main plate itself. And the reason why we want to put this, you know, main housing piece back inside of the main camber plate itself is because, once again, we need to clamp, you know, these different features with the vise so that we can prevent the plate from rotating as we're trying to tighten that ring. Okay, so now I've got the, you know, completed camber plate mounted up in the vise. You can see you cannot rotate this uh, camber plate the way I've got it mounted because it's indexed, you know, on, on the uh, strut tower brace as well as, the, you know, the various bolts on there. So now I'm going to go ahead and take my punch again and my nice mallet and I'm going to spin this ring till it stops. So you can see that, you know, even though I had t done it as tight as I could by hand using the punches, even just giving it like a soft tap, you could see that ring still start to tighten. And you're going to want to do this on all of the indentations to really make sure this gets tight. So you just saw there, you know, it's still spinning. And like I said before, when, we're, when we were undoing this, don't be afraid to give this some really solid wax. Now that that locking ring is fully secured, the last thing we have to do is take the little insert if you have it and uh, you know we'll just put that back into the center of the monoball. Um, some, sometimes it goes in pretty easily. Actually yeah, this one you can see I can just kind of press that in by hand but you can still feel it biting against the uh, edge of the monoball here so that'll stay very secure just on its own. Now, if for some reason you have difficulty pressing in that uh, inner sleeve, you can use something else like another socket and try and use that as a pressing tool. So, you know, this uh, large 10 millimeter half inch drive socket I have would work, would work just perfectly for that, but those things don't take too much force. So there you go guys, that's how to refurbish and replace the monoballs in your Milway camber plates. Um, you know, unfortunately it's not the most straightforward process. There's a little bit of tricks to use here and you kind of you know, need something like a bench vise, a big mallet and some punches, uh, but at least you can refurbish this if you really needed to. And uh, the, the monoballs I put in here um, are just replacements from Milway. Uh, you know, they claim they've sold many of these and haven't had, uh, you know, them wear out. But, well, obviously, as you just saw, the two plates that I just refurbished um, didn't, didn't do all that great in, in a little bit over 10,000 miles. Uh, so hopefully this new set lasts longer. But, alternatively, you can look elsewhere for monoballs. The uh, monoball assembly itself, so including the ball and the, you know, ring housing around it, has an outside diameter of 30 millimeters and the ball inside diameter is 16.9 millimeters and when you have that little sleeve um, that had an inside diameter of 13.4 millimeters so you know depending if you're using an M14 threaded top uh, top mount strut or top strut thread or an M12 one you know those are kind of what you would need to look for if you were looking in an aftermarket monoball so hope you guys found this helpful and uh, see you next time